Hey guys, um, I've been praying a lot about this message um, because of all the heat, anger, whatever you want to call it, that's going on all around us right now. But I'm just going to be honest with you guys, and I'm going to tell you where I'm coming from in a second, but this is what the Lord showed me in prayer. America has more idols than India. That hurt, guys, okay? I live in this land, same as you, to deal with everything just like you. I was like, man, God, that just does not sound right. But look around. That's why I'm putting this stuff out there, guys. That's why it's time to weep and pray between the porch and the altar as a nation and as a world. Okay, I'm going to give you some scriptures here and I'm going to st stick with this as best I can. Just bear with me. Revelations 1 and 18. Jesus, keys to death, hell, and the grave. Alpha the Omega, the beginning and the end. Read Isaiah 9, 2 through 7. The government's going to rest upon his shoulders. Guys, there's a reason why I'm bringing this out, okay? This one's free, but maybe you'll get the point of what I'm saying about these idols. Just look at some of my messages, God, but read them. Look at them in their entirety because it has nothing to do with me. I'm just a vessel that he created, okay? I told somebody, I said, you know what, I've got to, it's time for me to poke the bear. I just don't want to get my house firebombed either. But at the same time, I'm going to be obedient to Jesus. So you know what, guys, we have to get over it because all hell's breaking loose all around us and against us. If you're claiming to be a Christian, talk is cheap. So... This one's, this one's about, there's, I haven't got to all the idols yet, and I will. But this one, nobody even watched it. And I'm not, you know, of course it hurt a little bit, but really the reality of it is, why? Because people don't want to hear about this. That we're worshiping idols. The dollar. Definitely been an idol. Can you not, can we not see that? Can we not all agree on that? Maybe, maybe not. church had become an idol. I didn't shut them down, guys. The government did, but God allowed it. Why? Because the houses were built upon sand, most of them, and he wants to rebuild them, and they're not going to go away. That's not what I'm saying, and I'm not saying he shouldn't go. He wants to build up on the rock. And we're not going to get it without listening in prayer, okay? This is an idol that I put out there. It's called holiday idols. Guys, this is where the rubber meets the rail, guys. Just realize what I'm saying, okay, please. Christmas. What have we done? Xmas starts in July. Black Friday. We replaced, you, nobody knows what day, honestly. I don't think anybody does knows what day exactly the birth of Christ was. It's the day we celebrate it. And we picked December 25th. I don't really think anybody can, maybe, you know, fact correct me if I'm wrong, okay? But we replaced Jesus, the birth of Jesus, with a Christmas tree money. Walked into a big major retail and there's an $800 Christmas tree, guys. Everything's about the sale, the Black Friday stuff, all that. Earlier and earlier and earlier. Easter. The, guys, it's time to live in the spirit, not in the world. But no, we're not of the world. We, we're in the world, but not of the world. Easter, 
what has it become? An Easter bunny. And everybody lets out of church early so they can run and chase Easter eggs. Plastic Easter eggs. Bunnies, bunnies don't have chickens, don't lay eggs, guys. They have baby bunnies. Am I right? Chocolate bunny. What are we teaching our kids? That's what's happened to this world, guys. We've lost a generation. The church has lost a whole generation. That's what the Lord told me in prayer. And don't get me started on Halloween. Oh, it's fun. It's fun and games. Even churches have ha harvest celebrations or whatever you call them. Why does the Lord's Prayer say, Hallowed be thy name? You want Halloween? Is there not something there, guys? You promote demons, demonic stuff, ghost witches, death. That's why I'm putting this out, guys, because we've supported the idol of death. We've idolized it. I'm not wrong, guys. You know I'm not. Pick up an R-rated movie in Hollywood. Death and Mayhem. Vigilantes promoted everywhere. Now look at it. There's vigilantes going crazy all over this country because they don't like the death of one person. What about all the other people that have died from it? And it's affected and destroyed. How many cops have died from it? How many innocent people have died from it? I'm, I'm one, one lady. I'm not trying to hurt anybody because that's not... I'm the opposite. So please forgive me. And I will repent. But one of the ladies, her brother was killed. She's like, man, that's a lot of hurt. I get it, okay? So a lot of people have been affected by this. Not just one man's death. But we've idolized it. Okay? Video games, chopping people's heads off, cutting people's heads off, horror movies, everything's death. Abortion, death. We're a nation with blood on our hands, guys. I'm sorry to tell you that. You look at the internet and people are holding up signs. I just aborted my baby because of the, because I had lust for sex, but only it did said a lot more horrific stuff than that. Abortion on demand. What is it, a TV show, guys? Like your direct TV on demand? That's the devil. Guys, it's not a black and white issue. It's a sin, Satan versus God issue. The blood of the lamb or not. We've idolized it, guys. We teach our kids that. I saw a, a video of a kid, a little kid, flipping off somebody at some place. Okay, guys, it has gotten really, really, really vicious. I got to get the vicious part out because then I'm going to tell you something that's going to probably set the record straight on this that happened in Dallas. I'm in Dallas a year ago. I wouldn't let my grandkids talk to people some the way some of these politicians do. And you know what? I'm going to catch it, so it doesn't matter. Okay, look at the 2016 um, debates. Trash, guys, even from our president. Man, it was ugly. Now look at them. Mayors are cussing everybody out. Everybody's taking a stance. Everybody's, why? Because there's a demonic influence behind it, guys. Because Satan's behind it. Because he's a thief to rob, steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus has the keys. And we're just throwing them away, hiding them. That's why it's time to weep and pray. Okay, guys, I got to get this out. Okay, so you'll know where I'm coming from, okay? According to CNN, or pick one. I'm just, you know, any of them. The polls. I'm an older white guy, uneducated, and I voted for Trump. May vote for him again. Let me finish getting this out, okay? That's not true. 
Yes, I am uneducated. I was 18 years old and full of drugs and hell and got kicked out of high school for drugs, LSD. Had to get my GED, went to one year of college. So yeah, that fits. And I am older, I'm almost 60, guys. And I am white. But you know what, guys? Check it out. Do a fact check. I'll give you the names if you want, if you email me. 1980. Running from the law. They're not looking for me anymore. I was, it was back in the 70s when if you sold drugs, it was a crime. You sold pot, it was a crime. Now it's everybody smokes it and it's free everywhere. And, you know, you can order it in California and in two days it's at your doorstep. And you can pick it like a, you do a menu at a, at a restaurant. <clears throat> Become another idol. But let's get back to this death idol. Because I'm trying to stay focused. So, 1980, running from the law, from Minnesota, St. Paul, imagine that. Third, third, you know, 35 years, it's gone, it's done, they're not looking for me anymore. Way past. <laughs> but I got, truly got saved on a construction site by a black preacher out of California. I don't think he's around anymore. Now, he was older then. He's probably passed away. Showed me about being baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of my sins, being filled with the Holy Ghost. And it made sense, guys. My life was a mess. So I followed it. Got the Holy Ghost under another black minister. And it was in a, the, the story's great, but how I met him, but. So, but it was a house church, a real small church. Was, uh, most of the time I was the only one there, a lot of times. One day he said, Steve, I, I, I can't do anything more to help you. But you know what? I was in and out of church one day. He hadn't seen me off and on for six months. Didn't know where I was and all that. Well, I drifted back into, into drugs. Didn't have a place to stay. He gave me the keys to his house. Him and his wife and his young child were going on vacation. A day or two later, they went on vacation for two weeks. Black guy, black preacher. He's left me his keys to his house. 19 year old, or 18, 19 year old punk kid. Kind of saved, kind of not. Honestly, I was in that limbo, guys. I hadn't fully got there yet. Then one day he said, Steve, I can't help you anymore because I'm just, you know, we're too small and I'm just, you know, you need more. But I had gotten the Holy Ghost under his ministry. Took me to an all-black church, guys, in North Dallas, right over kind of where George Bush lives now, or one of his houses, million-dollar houses. And it was so, the church was so poor we couldn't even didn't even have air conditioning, guys. The windows would be open, and the black gospel music was blasting. And I was there for six years, guys. I was probably the token white guy. But you know what, I didn't care because I was just glad to be saved and set free. And I got the stink eye from parents, whites, and blacks. But I didn't care. I'm not saying that to say that I'm something, guys. I'm saying things aren't as they appear. Because the enemy has been deceiving people for years. He's very, very good at it. And you know why I love the sky? This was what would happen, guys. This message is going to be a little long, so just please listen to the whole thing because it's very, very important. All black church, needed a roof. I had worked construction. I had done roofing. The pastor would go out every day 
and work washing windows. He didn't make a lot of money, but he worked. And he would buy what shingles he could. And he asked for a work detail, and I was the only one that showed up, guys. And it would be three in the morning. And I don't know if you know anything about Dallas, but I lived in Irving. It's a 40 minute drive away, 30, 40 minute drive away from where I was. Three in the morning, it would be to work at seven in the morning. I was working construction and, and delivering pizzas and helping build it. And I was the only one that showed up. Me and him put the whole roof on. It was a pretty big church too, honestly. It took us weeks, months, long time month anyhow but you know what he was in his 60s he's still around and if you want his name I'll email it because I'm not going to put it on the internet I might because he was a great guy but that's not why I'm not putting it out there like I said I don't want a bunch of, bunch of hoopla to come against anybody I don't want to hurt anybody he was in his 60s and this was in 1980, the early 80s. He never once preached a racial message. Guys, don't you think he saw a lot of crap? Excuse my language, a lot of garbage. I'll repent for that. Forgive me, Lord. Don't you think he saw all that stuff? So if he's in his 60s, he was born in the 20s. An old farm boy. Big old guy. Big old black guy. Never once preached a racial message. Could have, because he had the audience. It was an all-black church. Everybody said, yay, amen. Could have idolized the B black move, label, Lives Matter movement or whatever, you know. He didn't. But he was a tough, tough word preacher. Tough. This was one of his sayings, and I put added something to it. But he used to say, he'd be preaching, and he'd say, you don't like that page in the Bible? Just rip it out. And I added something to it. You'll have a holy Bible, all right. It'll be so full of holes, you won't even recognize it. It's time to get back to the Word of God. It's time for God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word to be your source. You know, I'm going to end with this. There's so much more I could say about these idols, we've idolized it. We've idolized, and I am all for backing the police, but we've idolized that movement, back the blue. We've idolized the Black Lives Matter movement. We've idolized it because death, because we've idolized death, so there's a demonic force behind it, guys, that's drifting us farther and farther and farther into chaos and anarchy and stuff and that's why i said it's important that it's 5 a.m to pray and weep between the porch and the altar no more games guys there's a storm coming guys look at my videos i'm not doing this for anything i don't get an offering from anybody none of you guys are supporting me i'm not asking for anything because that's the beauty of the cross it's for all but this is what i'm going to say guys it's going to kind of strike to the heart of the matter. It was a year ago, maybe two, it was a long time ago, in Dallas, a white lady cop murdered a black guy, innocently. Wrong door, I, you know, you'll have to check the story. I don't remember it all because that's one of the issues that I am battling. It's some health issues, okay? So my memory is not where it needs to be. And I'll leave it at that. God's already done some miraculous healings. Honestly, I'm a, I'm a walking miracle, according to the doctors. And I can tell you that one day I got the doctor report. Horrible. That's not Jesus' report. That's not God's report. But, so I'm doing the best I can with this. Fact check it. It really happened. She got sentenced to death. I don't know if she got, I mean, I don't know if she got sentenced to death. She got sentenced to life. It may have been death. I'm not sure. I can't remember, like I said. It's just not because I don't want to. The brother, you know, people at the end of a, of a, of a you know, a trial get to say something to the person that's accused. He was weeping and crying and asking people to forgive her. And like I said, I don't want to hurt anybody. I'm not to bring up their names and. You know, please forgive me, guys, the people that this really happened to because there's real life hurt. Very, very deep, and I don't want to 
put another knife in it and, you know, twist it up. One situation matches the other. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is they did the right thing. As hard as it was. Because it was a hard issue. And this is what I'm, where I'm getting to with this. Trial, lady just got sentenced. She did do it. She was guilty, found guilty, sentenced to life. And justfully so, should have been. Fact check. <laughs> Made the news for a day or two, and that was about it. Well, I'm not gonna say her name either, and, and please forgive me, ma'am. It's a black judge, woman judge. Got off of her bench, or wherever she sits, you know, whatever you call it, the bench. And, gave, and went down and hugged the woman and gave her a Bible. Guys, that's, you know, and she kind of put her, I mean, that's not a great career move even, you know, you're, you're a pretty good judge. You just send somebody to, de to death, you know, it's just, it's kind of, you know, kind of out of order as far as the world goes, but that's not what God did. But this is the point, this is my point, guys. The brother just asked for forgiveness, cried and wept, just lost his brother, hurt, pain, anguish, not coming back. There's no rectifying it unless God performed a supernatural miracle. He stepped out, but this is my point, guys. That and plus lady that was a judge just sentenced her, the, the lady to death or not to death I'm sorry to life in prison maybe death I don't remember gave her a bible but it wasn't just any bible guys it was her own personal bible well don't you think maybe she, you know I've got some you put notes in them they, they mean something I got one that my wife gave me 10 15 years ago she bought me two but this one really means a lot to me, guys. I wouldn't want to lose it for anything. It's personal. On top of my heart and love for Jesus, it's personal to me. She gave from her heart, guys. Kind of stuck her neck out a little bit. You know, she's a judge. It's supposed to be you know, prim and proper now, it's like everybody's anti-authority, you know? So, guys, we've idolized too many things. Entertainment, I'm gonna say this one because this guy's like a loose cannon, Tom Arnold, you know, about grabbing guns and shooting everybody. Well, celebrities are saying, you know, F Trump and put a stick a needle in and make sure there's air in it. You know, death, murder, mayhem. Like I said, abortion. Sorry to wave my hand. My wife gets on me about that. I don't know what else to do. I'm trying. It's been idolized, guys. So many idols. And they have to come down. And that's what this storm is, guys. Read it in a week. There's a storm coming to America. He even gave me the date. I haven't got them all out there yet. There is one dream that came with it. We're the storm, guys, Joel's army. We are the storm. Because, let's face it, guys, during this coronavirus, where was 95, 99% of the church went into hiding. Now they're popping up. They stacked up their money and set aside, and they, you know, some of them haven't even changed. No repentance, no remorse, no change. Where is Jesus and all this, guys? So that's what America's got to do. But he told me that the, 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 the storm was not going to destroy this nation, but it was going to bring it to its knees. No more fence riding, guys. No more metal, you know. No more hogwash. No more idolizing. It's a purging, purifying, cleansing. 
Guys, it's this dream. Look at it. America was on fire from one end of the country to the other. 100 foot tall flames for a month from 8 11 to 9 11. Look at it, guys. I'm not making this up. This dream was a year ago. And I've had five cents attached to it. I haven't even got to them yet because I've been doing some other things in the midst of all this coronavirus. And I will add this because. We lost three quarters of our income, most of our income, at Christmas on the 21st. I haven't had a job since. My wife hasn't. And the things God showed me, I was like, I will get to it one day, but told me something to do. You know what I told them, guys? I didn't tell them no. I said, oh, hell no, God. I'm not doing that. Well, I had to repent. I and I did, and he told me what to do and how to do it and certain specifics, and it's too comp not complicated, but it's just too long to tell you. I will share it one day. But he did everything he told me to do, that he would do. And so now I just, what's next, God? What's next, Jesus? What do I do next? 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 <sighs> if you knew what he did to provide, the manna from heaven, guys. And I'm not doing it because I want the manna from heaven, guys. I'm doing it to be obedient, to be his vessel, just like this message. It's just time, guys. I prayed and prayed and prayed and wept and cried and been up 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in the morning. Waking up in sweats. Knowing that this message had to come out. But I don't want to hurt anybody. Neither does Jesus. But you're going to have to choose. The truth is going to come out. You're going to have to choose, guys. God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word are not at all. His people are going to be taken care of. That's why it said, if my people are called by my name, will humble themselves and turn and pray. Humble is the key phrase here, guys. One of them, and then turn is another one. Pray is another one. Because when you pray, no, I'm not talking about popcorn prayer and God, I need a job and God, I need money and God, I need money. I, I need, I need, I need. It's listen and follow the leading of the Holy Ghost because he says, lamp would be a word under, a light under our path and a lamp under our feet and a light under our path. So I put that out there. There's a correlation to this, guys. I am going to end because it's getting kind of long. But I'm sorry, but that dream, uh, that dream I had of Amos 8, 11, about a famine in the land for the lack of the word. It didn't really sink in at first. It did. I knew that it was an awesome word from the Lord and an awesome dream. But then a day or two later, it sunk in. 8-11 from the dream I had the year before like God put a stamp on it I'm telling you guys don't take this stuff lightly that's another one of my messages Matthew 20 21 and 22 we didn't reject God we God didn't reject us we rejected him read it and weep guys this is not a game this is not Monopoly. You don't get to Pascal and collect 200 bucks. This is not a black and white issue. This is a devil. Satan versus God. God versus Satan. Jesus is the key. The blood of the Lamb. He has the keys to the kingdom to death, hell, and the grave. Time to give up these idols, guys. I probably have some different ones than you in some areas. But we've all got some main ones that are the same. The church had become an idol, guys. Ministry had become an idol, guys. I'm going to end with this. That's what he told me. He said it's time for people in the ministry to get over themselves. A year ago, two years ago. I was like, man, God, that hurts. Because I was ministering at home, the shelter. My wife and I would split it some and, or whatever. But every Sunday night for almost three years. Tough crowd. Tough man.
ministry. Didn't get anything for it. Nobody gave us nothing. Actually, we got little zero help, pretty much. But from the Lord, we got all the help we needed. Long story. It hurt. He said, go to Second Chronicles 7, 14, 2, 7, 14. 2 Chronicles 7, 14. We all know that scripture, and that's a great scripture, and everybody's quoting now, and it's been kind of highlighted. And, but, it, but it was still one of my favorite scriptures. He said, imagine if, if they humbled themselves, prayed, turned, prayed, humbled. Humbled being the key. That's hard for Americans to do, humble ourselves, because we've been a proud nation. That's another idol, the pride, pride of life, lust of the flesh. I'm sorry, guys, I'm not trying to knock out everything I'm telling you it's time to set it lay it aside and cast aside all these idols and get back to the cross and watch God move when we follow his plan which was his son but this is what he told me with the rest of it he said instead they're too big this was way before the church is all closed way before the coronavirus which nobody had ever even heard of And I'm not trying to say that to be something great. I'm just saying that's how the Lord, what he did with for me. And that's what he's doing for the rest of this. This is coming. There's a storm coming, guys. And this, this is just a prelude to, 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 to some storms. He said they were too busy building serfs, turfs, and kingdoms that weren't of him. Where do you think all this non-essential garbage came from, guys? I'm going to kind of zero in on this because I do need to finish, but what did we just do to, to people? Non-essential. Guys, even Mike Rowe, that guy that did that dirtiest jobs in America, I don't know if he's saved or not. I don't know. He seems like a decent guy, though. He said it's a problem. The way we treat people. Talk to them. Another idol can say anything you want. Like I said, even our president. I mean, look at the mayors, look at the governors, look at the, look at the news. One lady, my ancestors built this country, and I can burn it down if I want. What are we teaching our kids? Guys, like I said, I wouldn't even, some of the stuff that's being spouted out there, I wouldn't even let my grandchildren say that kids when they're kids now they're adults and they can say and do whatever they want they're fully grown and hopefully they make all the right decisions hopefully and pray for me the serfs demeaned everybody now we demean the police badly but we've also demeaned the black people i get it Black prison, I get it. There's some disparities and some issues there. Okay, look up. It's a three-year-old message, guys. Okay, I'm going to end with this. So you know I'm not just, this is not just me spouting off and getting on my soapbox. Because we all got them, okay? I'm human too, and I'm going to miss the marks on, but most of the time, no. Because I have to put a lot of prayer into this because life and death is in the power of the tongue. And so what I say does matter, and what you say does matter. What everybody says does matter, and how they act does matter. It was three years ago, two or three years ago. It was a long time ago. Look it up, guys. It's on the internet. It's d dated when it was. It was two years ago. John Kelly was on ABC or something, and he said that the Civil War is just a misunderstanding. Guys, probably even if you look at the time, it wasn't even minutes, because I prayed, and it really vexed my spirit. And I put on there, John Kelly, generally... I mean, he was an honorable man. Guys, this is not, I'm going to catch flack for this, and I don't really, it doesn't matter, because I'm about my father's business. It's time to cut through all this. And get rid of these idols. It's hurt too many people. We as a nation have hurt the black people. I get it. Badly. But I, this is what I put on the message. I said, you're wrong. It wasn't a misunderstanding. It was a heinous, murderous regime based upon greed, the idol of greed and money, and 
mayhem and kill people just for the money. Wealth. Didn't care. I said it was no better than Hitler's regime. Hitler came to power after World War I because World War I had decimated the country and the people had wheelbarrows full of money. It was worthless. Nobody was working, unemployment, it was a mess. We, kill, we killed them and then we really killed them. His allies tried to get him to pay it back. Kind of like some of these black people are saying, white people have to pay cash or all money. Yeah, guys, it's just all twisted up lies. Hitler came to power because he put the people back to work. He built highways, and, but he had an agenda, guys. A hidden demonic agenda. We all know that. That's what's going on right now, guys. That's what that regime was all about. The Confederacy and all that stuff. It was an evil empire. Look, at, look it up. I'm not making this up, guys. To get your YouTube votes. To get your support. God's my source. Been my source. Jesus has been my source. The Holy Ghost. The blood of the Lamb is sufficient. So let's just get back to the cross. But it's really time to weep and pray. As a nation. In 5 a.m. And there's another person that put on a post about somebody that did it at 8 a.m. for one minute. And it was a really good post. I'm going to repost it. But... I haven't even got to all the dreams. I've had two dreams recently. And I saw people's actual faces in the dreams. And unfortunately, because this is an aisle too, but they were political figures. They weren't good dreams. About where this agenda was going. I'm going to put them out soon. Or try to. I'm soon, I'm just been kind of a little bit overloaded with other the stuff that the Lord has me doing too and so it's like okay God which one do I do first but let's end with this it's like the whack-a-mole game guys that's what the devil's doing which you never play that at uh, Chuck E. Cheese or whatever boom comes up boom 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 can never kind of catch them all many older people know what I'm talking about well, that's what the devil's doing it was the Russia pro. It was the Iran. It was North Korea. It was what President Trump said. It was some people say he's a prophet. Some people say he's a pathological liar that lied 16,000 times. Well, I also put that out two years ago. Pray for him as a man. I, I, he, he's become an idol. Sorry, guys. My, my, I'm not saying don't vote. I'm going to vote, too. Like you should do. Even if we disagree on it, I don't care. But my trust and faith is in Jesus. And all these idols have to come down, guys, or, 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 or submit. My name is Jesus, and at the sound of my name, every knee will bow. That's another video I got out. I was in prayer. I'm going to end with this. I need to. Was in prayer. Look, Jesus appeared before me, and it was loud, guys. At first, I was like, "Why are you shouting?" After he said this, but he said, "My name is Jesus, and at the sound of my name, every knee will bow. Not all, some maybe could be black, white, green, yellow, but whatever. President, non-president, drunk bum, homeless guy, gal. Every knee." Bow. The pre French president, Vladimir Putin, the guy, that guy that's over the Chinese government, every knee. Even the people that are being portrayed as demonic just because they've got a bunch of money. Maybe. But every knee. So that's where I'm at, guys. That's even become an idol. Now people are like walking around in chains, slavery chains, white people. That We pick up racism as an idol, guys. When you pick up that demon, it's going to bite you. Bad. It's killed people. Innocent people. 
And I look at some of these people, young, young police officers, families, some non-police officers, business owners that have been destroyed, cities that have been taken over, rampage, outrage, rage. Where's it coming from, guys? Not from God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word, but from the devil himself, guys. So are we going to take it idly? It is time to arm ourselves, guys. But I'm not talking about grab, grab your AK-47 and march on the Capitol. What I'm talking about is arm yourself with the Word of God. Because it's par more powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. The sword of the Spirit. Time to live by the Spirit. Revelations 1, 18. Isaiah 9, 2, and 7. And there's so many, but Amos 8, 11. There's going to be a famine in life. Love you guys. I'm sorry to be so long. There's so much to say. Pray for me. I'm praying for you. Too many idols. That's why I said turn off the news, guys. Honestly, that's one of the idols, too. We just we think we're smarter than, and, and it's garbage. Honestly, polluting your mind. Anyhow, I love you guys. Um, love you guys a lot. Just and this this is the last thing I will say. Honestly, I keep saying that, but and I'm sorry, I'm not lying. I just have too much to say. I'm on YouTube and I'm doing you know posting and stuff. Bunches of different ministries. Some of them pretty big. Some of them not. Got their comments turned off. What are they scared of? The truth. Monitor on. Say what you want to say, man. I've been, the F bomb's been dropped. I don't care, you know. Like water off a duck's back. I used to use it too, okay, guys? I was once unsaved. I really get the grace piece. Honestly, I really do. That's one of my messages too. My testimony is real grace. Look it up. I'm not the only preacher doing this, guys, and it, I, I'm saying this is Joel's army, and it may come from your next-door neighbor who's just the usher at the church. I don't know. It's Joel's army coming forth, guys. Love you. Um, let's get rid of the idols. Let's get rid of them together. Let's pray together. See you tomorrow at 5 in the morning. I'm up mostly every day, but not every day. Some days I just have to sleep in. I'm just exhausted. But other day, most of the time I'm up. I poked my head out the door, my, got my address on there in my street. Here's this too, but the Bible says wherever two or more gather together in my name. It's the unity, guys, of it that he's looking for and when he sees us all. And the reason why it's 5 a.m. is because there's no internet on unless you turn it on. There's no, no TV unless you turn it on. There's no cell phone. There's no wives or husbands or kids to distract you or or college or whatever, you're you're just you're it's pretty quiet. But it can be any time, guys. But that's imperative that we get together and we all find some time together as a nation to do this. Cause the proof is in the pudding look around, guys, is it not a mess? And it's not gonna get fixed by idols and politicians and voting. It's gonna get fixed. By the, not by our theology, but by our neology, by us getting a hold of God that created heaven and earth and his plan, which was his son Jesus, and his leading of the Holy Ghost, and his reading of the word. Open your Bible, guys. It's right there. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. That The word, that power is sitting there. And most of us got dust up, got dust on, and if we read it, we skim over it, we're too busy, and we try to read the newspaper and the Bible and the, the internet and do everything. Multitasking, eight things at once. God doesn't want your ability, He wants your availability, so it's time to get up.